Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Wally. And in this segment of Roofing It Right with Dave and Wally, we're outside finally in 28 degree weather. I checked. Lovely. Lovely, isn't it? We're going to use our spray adhesive. We have brought this setup from the inside to the outside now in this gloomy day, all right? The canister itself has to be kept at 50 degrees or warmer, right? Wherever it's stored. Right, yeah. and it was inside and it's about 70 in there. Right. It is 28 degrees out here. It has to be used at 20 and rising. So it can't be 20 rising at like by noon, right? Correct. It's got to be 20 when you start work that morning. Exactly. Minimum, minimum 20. That's exactly. At least we can use it there. Okay. Minimum. Right. Yeah. So right. what we're going to do is show three different things. We're going to show too heavy, too light, and just right. All I got to do is reach down, turn this on, and once we turn it on, we're not going to shut it off, right? Correct. Okay. We'll talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no need to shake this up rolled across the roof to, to mix these ingredients, right? No, no, no. Okay. It's not like a bonding adhesive okay. or, or a bucket of bonding adhesive. Okay, got it got on. It? All right, so we're going to go too heavy. So or you really don't want to see for the installation. And another thing you don't want to do is this. What am I doing there, Dave? You're overlapping by overlapping. like 75%. Right, we don't want no overlap. No. So why is this too heavy? It's, it's bubbling. It's blistering, and you're not going to get the uh, the right amount of coverage either. Coverage rate. So what would happen? We've had all these bubbles or blisters, if you will. What would happen if a guy did this in the field and mated everything together? It 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 would blister. I mean, you would see, see bubbles, blisters, made blisters yeah, all over yeah. your roof, mm -hmm. and those are not going to go away. No, okay. not at all. Now that's not good for the contractor's bottom line. So this is what you definitely don't want to see. Now let's do what? what too light, maybe. Too light. Okay. That's too light. I would think, yeah. yeah. You're going to get a lot of coverage, but you're not going to get the adhesion is what we're looking for. Exactly. So this is basically what we really want to see on the roof. So we got too heavy, not enough, and just about right. Just about right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to kind of go over a typical installation. Uh, you can see we got a couple sheets here. This is one way to lay out. It's called a butterfly. Fold one half back, one half back. Now the thing to remember, if you go about it this way, is this sheet is going to lap onto this one. So you got to be careful not to get any adhesive along that, along that seam. So Dave, why are you standing there with that insulation? <laughs> so you don't gain adhesive on that seam. Not to mention you, right? Me, me I got new boots, so yeah. I don't want them all, you know. So that's another thing you got to really take into consideration on a windy day. If you have a car, you're working on a roof, oh. you've got cars in a parking lot, you better get those moved, so. Absolutely. All right, so here's what, kind of what we're doing. Tip this, again, this is just a typical installation. And we're going to do, I'm going to make a pass from this sheet across the insulation down there and just, I'm going to work my way back. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now we, all we have to do is let it set up. Let it set up, let it flash off a little bit, and then we'll mate it together. So how do we go about testing this, see if it's set up enough to lay it in? Well, you use the uh, dry knuckle test. Dry knuckle test. Right. So obviously, it's cloudy today, yeah. it's colder. Yep. It's going to take a little longer to set up versus if we were in Florida today, which I just came from, it was 85 degrees and sunny. Hate you. It's going to set up like right now. So again, we got to wait. This is basically what you're going to do. Take your knuckle, your finger. You can see that's still not really set up. You look at this, Wally. See why I pulled up with my, my knuckle right there? See how, how wet it is? We'll give it a few more minutes here. We're going to roll it. Roll one side in, this side, and this side's going to lap on top of it. That's yep. going to be our weld area. That we'll broom it in. We're done. Okay, we've got the adhesive installed, the insulation, and on the membrane, it's it's ready to be rolled in. So now here's where you gotta pay attention. If you butterfly sheets like this, there's a certain order you have to roll this in. I'm gonna roll this side in first because the side that you've got, Dave, yes. why do we not wanna roll that in first? Because I have the bare side over here and that's what we're gonna weld. Ready? Okay, so we're done with our, our adhesive. We got our membrane laid out. We got everything glued down. So now we got about half this canister left. So in order to store this, all we're going to do, we're not going to turn this off. We're going to leave this open. We're going to use this in a, in, a, in a very new future. Only thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lock this trigger down by this safety right here so it cannot be pulled. That's the only thing you do to store this. The other thing we want to talk about is if we're on a job and we have half this container left, and we're going to store it for an extended period of time. 
So what you'd want to do is turn this valve off so it's all the way off. Spray the excess into some type of applicable container. You don't want to just spray it out on the roof. Once that's all expelled or evacuated, as Dave likes to say. I do, I do. Remember, that's 12 foot of adhesive coming out of there. Yeah, there's, there's a lot left in there, even though that's off. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's pretty much done. So now all we would do now is disconnect this from this container. And shortly, we're going to show you how to clean this, because you have to clean this once you disconnect it. If you don't clean it, you're going to be buying a new gun and hose. So clean these. Don't just throw them away. So the other thing we want to talk about, what to, how to dispose of this. So if I'm, if I'm on the roof and I'm spraying and it's running out, I'm just going to run everything out of the hose. Right, run everything I'm, out of your hose. I'm going to have another container right there. Take it off, put it on the other container. I mean, like, right, you're not going to waste any time. You're going to take no. it off. You're going to hook it right to the other container. What we're going to do with this empty one is we're going to just knock out here. We're going to punch that in. And we're going to dispose of this according to applicable uh, regulations or whatever the part of the country you're from. You just don't want to throw it alongside the road. Make sure you dispose of it properly. We've already evacuated everything on this hose. We've got the, the container shut off. Now we're going to take this hose off and we're going to put it, install it on our cleaner and clean this hose and this nozzle. Let me take this off. Got it? Yep. Let me get that door Dave. Okay, we've got it hooked to the cleaner. Dave's got the valve on. I'm gonna spray this into an appropriate container for approximately 15 seconds. Once that's clean, we're gonna dispose of this container uh, uh, as per applicable standards or whatever part of the country you're from. You should get about eight to nine cleanings out of that, Dave, roughly? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that pretty much wraps up our, our, our little demo on our GAF quick spray. Dave, anything else you wanna add? No, I just wanna go to lunch. <laughs> of course you do. Um, Stay tuned, uh, watch our other videos at Roofing and Right with Dave and Wally at GAF.com.